Have you ever had an experience, a situation where your circumstances in an instant changed so dramatically that you felt confused and hopeless? A story is told of a couple that while traveling stopped to hike a trail to the top of the lookout. It was a windy day and as they reached the top, oh, what a wonderful view it was. As they were scanning the horizon, a gust of wind blew the woman's contact lens out of her eye. Along with her husband, she immediately began searching for him. But with blurred vision, it seemed hopeless. They began to spread out their search wider and wider in the direction of the wind. But to no avail. Her husband said to forget it so they could should leave. But the woman insisted that she could not because she really needed it. The husband then said that they needed to pray about it. They did and continued their search. They did all they could, but could not find it. Exhausted, scared and almost hopeless, they decided to take on the steep rocky path. Just as they decided to head back down the trail, another couple arrived and asked if either of them have lost a contact lens. Astonished, the woman said she did and asked, how did you find it? <clears throat> the man said that while they were walking up the trail, they saw the most peculiar sight. On the ground in front of them was an ant carrying a contact lens. So they took it from the ant. Friends, we should realize that our own circumstances could also dramatically change in an instance. It makes me think of the followers of Jesus and how their lives dreams and hopes were all shattered after the, after the crucifixion of their Lord. I invite you to keep your Bibles open at the very last few verses of the Gospel of Mark as we study how this great disappointment were handled by Jesus. It is Sunday morning, the day after the great disappointment for the Apostles and the followers of Jesus. Mary Magdalene, the mother of James and Salome, arrived at the empty grave where an angel proclaimed, He has risen, He is not here. After a personal encounter with Jesus, Mary reported, He is alive, to the weeping followers of Christ, but they did not believe it. Jesus also appeared to Cleopas and his friend, who immediately returned to Jerusalem and conveyed it to the followers, but they did not believe it. Later, appearing to the eleven, Jesus reproached the disciples for not believing the eyewitnesses. But then the mood changes in verse 15 and 16, and we read, Then Jesus said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but, he, but who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Our belief and trust in Jesus is the qualifying criteria required to be trusted with the great commission to preach the gospel to the whole world. After confirming the extent of the commission, the disciples received the assurance, the assurance that he who has believed in me and has been baptized shall be saved. That means <coughs> saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment also known as the second death or the eternal separation from God. Eternal separation from God. Excuse me. It is belief, it is belief or trust in the Son of God that makes us enter through the door of salvation. The second aspect that Jesus emphasizes in the importance of being is the importance of being baptized. In the light of the great controversy, baptism is an important proclamation of the, our faith and allegiance towards Jesus for all creation to witness. To be baptized was the desire of my heart once I have decided to follow Jesus. This was not driven out of fear from losing out on eternal life, but it was driven by the desire to be with all of you believers forever in the presence of God. Friends, Today I will present to you, I will present you with the three P's that Jesus gives when life happens to us. And no, I'm not referring to the three principles that 
he gave himself into this. The first P stands for provision. Provision of salvation as we have just discussed. Jesus gives provision of salvation to all. The second P stands for power. Jesus gives power to all believers to be his disciples. God is well aware of our abilities and weaknesses and we have the ultimate assurance of this in that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. One of the most obvious signs that God is aware of our shortcomings is the establishment of the church. Friends, we need each other. By working together, we can achieve great things. This is also known as synergy, where the result of our combined effort is greater than the sum of our individual contributions. In the Old Testament, God employed signs to show and proclaim who He is. Through Moses, the ten plagues fell on Egypt and Elijah's prayer were answered with fire from heaven. While on earth, Jesus used signs to proclaim who He is, driving out demons, calming the seas and healing the sea. The power that God bestows on the early disciples came from in the form of special signs. The Greek word sia mion or sign in the context of verse 17 means miracle or wonder for the purpose of demonstrating who God is. The remainder of verse 17 and 18 then gives us examples of these signs. With the exception of drinking deadly substances, the book of Acts provides evidence of the signs mentioned in these two verses. Paul, exhorting a demon, showed power over the spiritual realm. New languages showed power to do evangelism. Paul, bitten by a snake, showed power over physical attacks. And Saul's eyesight restored shows the power of healing and to be a blessing to others. Today, every disciple of God, through our daily life and activities, is a sign of the kind of God that we serve. Verse 17 reminds us of the condition before using the power that Jesus gives us. Jesus said, in my name they will. It is imperative to remember that signs must be done in the name or the character of Jesus. That is out of love for others and absolute unselfishness. You know in Acts we read of an account where Jewish exorcists were attacked by an evil spirit who injured them and made them flee naked because they tried to work the sign with a selfish motive in their hearts. In the same passage, it is emphasized how God performed extraordinary and unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. In my own life, attempts to mend broken, a broken relationship, it failed miserably while I was fighting for and cherishing my own self-interest. But a miracle was manifested when I was willing to deny myself and seek the well-being of the other person. At the beginning of the sermon, we discussed the first P, Jesus gives provision for salvation to all. Now, we have just considered the second P, that Jesus gives power to all believers to achieve His purpose. And that brings us to the third P, Jesus gives purpose to believers. Jesus came to our planet, to us, with a specific purpose. And that is to reconcile humanity to God. Jesus succeeded in His purpose and as a final sign that He is the Son of God, He was taken up into heaven before the very eyes of the disciples. Verse 19 notes, So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Jesus was rewarded by being seated on the right hand of God as he himself proclaimed would happen before his ascension. And in the parallel section of this passage in Matthew 28, Jesus proclaims, All authority have been given unto me in heaven and on earth. In the same way, 
believers, baptized followers, the disciples of Christ are given that very same purpose to reconcile humanity to God. Do you remember the question asked at the beginning of the sermon? Have you ever experienced a situation where your circumstances in an instant, instant changed so dramatically that you felt confused and hopeless? A middle-aged couple felt confused and hopeless as the foundation of their belief system was shaken when they learned about what the Bible really teaches. Almost to the day, eight years ago, that couple found new purpose in their life. The original Afrikaans words from their testimony given on the day of their baptism is translated as follows. Now we know what we want to do with our time. Give glory to God, preach Jesus through our lifestyle and conduct, and to share our knowledge of Jesus with everyone willing to listen, and even those not willing. If it is the Lord's will, we, we will be going to Heldeberg College with the purpose of studying theology. Today, eight years later, I can testify to you that God provided in abundance the power and resources for us to succeed in this purpose. And as Jesus, before His ascension, we can look forward to our greatest reward of fulfilling our purpose to be forever with believers in the presence of God. Friends, from these final verses of the Gospel of Mark, we have learned that Jesus gives three P's when, circum when circumstances change and you feel confused and hopeless. Jesus gives the provision of salvation to everyone willing to believe in Him. Jesus gives power to all believers to live according to His will. And Jesus gives purpose to believers for this life and the life to come. Do you remember the end? Did you know that God gave some ants the, the power to carry up to 50 times the weight, their own body weight? An object up to 50 times their own body weight. God is in charge of all nature and all nature obeys their maker. The ant was told to carry the contact lens. This is despite the fact that the ant could not eat it, could not use it, and not to mention that it was so much bigger than itself. Regardless, the ant used his power and took this purpose and just did it. Are you at times reluctant to, to just take it because God said so? Follow the ant and take what God gives. My question to you today is, when you find yourself in despair and Jesus gives, will you take the three peace that He has offered? Will you take the provision of everlasting life that Jesus gives to you by accepting Him into your life? Will you take the power that Jesus gives to every believer who becomes His disciple? And will you take the purpose that Jesus gives for this life and the life to come? Amen.